you have a thoughtful Graham Dretch, sent me a link to this website, uh, there's the address, and it's got uh, a wide selection of different models that you can download, and they're ideal for testing things with. And what I thought I would look at is doing skin in Bryce. Now, as you know that, uh, or as you probably know, Das Studio who can uh, import on and bridge to Bryce, a fantastic range of models that are available at uh, Das, but it's very difficult to get good looking skin out of Bryce because it lacks subsurface scattering and uh, if you download the head you get this selection of files and one of them is an example render here you go which looks very good and the things that uh, subsurface scattering will provide you with is like if you look inside the ear there's a bit of red where the lights come through the back of the ear uh, around the nose shadow here there's a little bit of red where the lights entered the skin here and then exited out through the shadow region and that's tinted red there and these fine details really make the skin look realistic but unfortunately Bryce can't do that so I need to either fake subsurface scattering um, using what effects and absorbers inside the model and that really increases the render time or try and find ways of lighting a model that minimizes the expectation in us as the viewer to see this effect and this can be done by providing a lot of overall lighting. So what I've done is I've opened empty Bryce scene. I'm getting rid of the ground plane. I'm going to file and import object and then get the head object. So this is the head object. Here we go and just enlarge it so that it fills the view. And I'm also going to um, modify oh, it's facing the wrong way around. I'm just flipping around here. Uh, modify the field of view because I'm going to use a Trambient rendering mode which is going to slow things down. So I'll change the document setup make it one to one and reduce the size of the document so it's uh, got a fairly fast preview and then narrow the field of view and, and pull the camera back a bit so that the perspective's not too extreme on the head which might look a bit weird we get foreshortening and, and sort of a, a enlargement of objects that are close to the camera right you can see immediately that uh, the mesh isn't yet smooth so we can edit and just smooth the mesh which doesn't take too long because it's not tremendously complex mesh and now we've got it smoothed and we'll just move the camera uh, not the camera the sun the light source around the sun so we've got it falling across one side of the model so at the moment that's not looking very realistic in fact the, it's looking a bit smooth so let's look at the materials on this model so at the moment we've got the skins which mapped and all the components of the model are mapped in the same way which makes it very easy to do some testing we've got no bump so I'm going to stick a blob in bump put some bump on go into the texture source editor and load one of the maps here that gives us some bump effect like this is this is a low res bump no good for Bryce you need high res bump for uh, the images because uh, it doesn't smooth the facets on the bump so if you have low res you'll see the pixels of that make up the bump map so we'll open this it's 6000 by 6000 but it won't open properly because it seems to have the wrong uh, bit depth for Bryce so to get over that you can load that into um, Paint Shop Pro uh, for example that's what I'm using so I'll load that in and then uh, save a copy of that I'll save it back into the not that man. Uh, this one. Here we go. So we've just put bump converted as a JPEG. And when we go back into Bryce now and load that, we load the converted one. It'll read that information fine. And we've got the bump applied, and that's full bump. But it because of the high resolution nature of the 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 bump map, it's probably not enough at that. Now using the slider you can't take it over 100 but if you type a figure in directly you can have more bump so I've done a few tests and 250 seems to work about right at this resolution of image that you'd have to try for each uh, in model you've got to find the appropriate level something else we're going to need is specularity so I'm going to stick a blob in the specular so the specular color gets its color from this map here and I'll give it 10 specular and I'm going to modify the specular halo which uh, is set rather high down to 203 which is something I've experimented with I don't know if that's exactly right but I gave it a go so now I'll give that a render now you can't see much specular effect on the model itself what I'm going to do for the primary light source which is the sun is set the specular output very high 
for this so we get we get a bit of a sheen on his skin there now it, it's uh, it doesn't look really very good at the moment but we're just setting things up now due to the lack of subsurface scattering what we really need to do is fill in these shadow regions a bit because the subsurface scattering effect really shows up where there's a transition between a very bright light source like this and, a, and, and dark areas or where light's getting in through the back of something which is thin like the inside of the ear or the nostril and not meeting it from the other side. So what we'll do, I'll go, turn the atmosphere off and set it to fully white, oops missed, fully white, go into the Skylab image based lighting and I'm going to use HDRI image I won't check sky dome only but I will use sky and that gives me a fully white HDRI image. You're going to turn the quality down to 16 light from inside, turn cast shadows off, turn specular output off, turn true ambience optimization off and I'll set this up at I don't know 250 for now and include only the background so we're setting things up so we can have obscure lighting which is going to provide an all-round lighting effect so I'll just check out of there for obscure lighting we'll need the true ambience setting so I'll just set this down to preview mode of 4 at the moment check true ambience uh, scattering correction boost light maximum ray depth down to 4 and then I'll go into create create my light source I'll set that family to a different color to remind me to change the attribute name to background so it can become a target for the lighting edit it Trambience optimization, use gel, include only background, procedural, and reset to default gray. I'm just going through very quickly because there's a lot of tutorials now that include this process, and what I really want to talk about is skin. So I'll just enlarge this light source so it's entirely around the model. Go to sky and fog and set the sky to fully black now. Remember, we've got the light source, and let's see if we can get some output from the light source. So, yeah, we've got plenty of light, a bit too much really. So all I'll do is go back into the Skylab and set this down. I'll set it at 150 and see how that looks now. Bearing in mind when generating the HDRI, the sun is automatically disabled. So at the moment we're just looking at the, the true ambience output from the obscure lighting setup. So I'm just setting that down. Now the role of this is to hide the lack of subsurface scattering and that's why I've created a light that reaches in from all directions. So at this point we're just going to try and balance this out and then get the key light on to provide a bit of more lighting interest because it's very flat at the moment. All right, I'll just move the camera up a bit. As we're using premium effects we might as well have depth of field set and we should have soft shadow set as well. They won't really add much to the render time. So I'll just select something that's at the front of the face. So that's just a bit of the mesh. Go into the render options and set to current selection for the depth of field and then just render a little bit to see if that's very much of an effect and if not go back in and increase the lens radius to increase the um, effect of blurring as things are getting away from the camera so that's a little bit blurred there I don't want to overdo the effect so at the moment that's how things are looking so you can see the shoulders are going out of focus but this part of the face should be in focus now if I go into this Skylab again I can turn the sun back on this w the sunlight's the only thing that's going to show up if I render in scene and due to the already um, having or a lot of light arriving from the trambience effect I'm going to set the sun down a bit I'm not uh, decided on the level yet we'll just give that a try so that provides a bit of highlight now the, the main advantage of having a lot of light around the model is this is going to hide to a great extent the mesh smoothing issue that we've got in Bryce and uh, and also hide the lack of subsurface scattering to a degree. Uh, what else can we do in the Skylab? We can turn soft shadows on for the sunlight and I'm going to lower the HDRI effect again so we have got a bit of more sense of direction from the lighting. But uh, the more I lower it the, the greater risk of seeing the, the facets appearing due to the problem with the mesh smoothing. So at the moment then it's quite brightly lit. I mean uh, we can choose whatever background we like in terms of lighting to to explain where all this light's coming from. That's not uh, not really an issue. So we'll give him a white background, I suppose, because that would look right for uh, for having all this light around. And you can see it's quite grainy, but still rendering fairly quickly, considering we're using premium effects. And because we've only got one direct light source, 
and that being the sun then if we turn the race pixel up to maximum which should give a fairly good effect on the bump and the uh, HDRI um, global illumination from coming from the HDRI going through the Trambians effect through the light source we've set up then uh, the render time shouldn't be too bad so I'll just give that a quick render so that's saying 6 minutes 41 so there you go that's a fairly quick setup that I've done here of, as part of an ongoing experiment to try and get a good effect of skin out of Bryce and obviously if you can use just just set the effect up for one area of skin like this it, it allows the development of whatever settings you're going to need to be accelerated and then when you bring a DAS model in like Victoria where she's got lots of different components then you have to identify each component and set it up individually which is obviously more time consuming so it's better to uh, to get it worked out beforehand right so I'll just let that render out and uh, that'll be the final render for this tutorial I hope you found that interesting and uh, go on to experiment with trying to get in your own skin effects. Okay.